Okay, now you have in front of you a slideshow about topic three, finite control volume analysis. So this is the part one of the topic three, chapter three, finite control volume analysis. So I divide into three parts, this uh, chapter three, part one is conservation of mass, part two is conservation of energy, and part three is conservation of momentum. So there are three conservation that we are going to study. So now we are going to start with conservation of mass. The objective of this lesson is to apply the conservation of mass equation to balance the incoming and outgoing flow rates in a flow system. Conservation of mass, it means you cannot create mass. You cannot destroy mass. You can change any random shape to a regular shape. You can do that. But the amount of mass, if you measure the weight, it will be the same. The total will be the same. So for that, let's start by understanding the terms control volume. Suppose that you want to study piston and cylinder. So you are going to draw a virtual boundary that enclose the fluid inside the cylinder. So that the boundary that covering our fluid, we call it control volume. So we need to define this control volume to analyze the flow. The boundary can be real, something like in the case of cylinder piston, the boundary will be the inside wall of the cylinder. Or you want to study a space in the air somewhere. So you are going to enclose this part of the space with something virtual. So the boundary will be virtual. So this control volume need to be understood so we can analyze the flow to find, for example, velocity. The control volume, the shape, of the volume that you create can be small, can be big, can be finite, can be infinitesimal. So a control volume is a finite or infinitesimal region in space that represents our system. Two types to analyze the fluid flow. For example, you are on a bridge above the highway and then you watch the car passing through the bridge. So at the time, you watch one car has a speed maybe slower than other cars, so you can analyze the flow of the car below you. That is what we call Eulerian type. So we just analyze the fluid passing through a certain location. The fluid particles, I consider the car as a fluid particles. Another way to analyze the fluid is by, for example, in the case of car, you go inside the car. So you travel with the car. Your friend travel with another car. Each of you will analyze its own car. So that's what we call Lagrangian type. So we analyze each particle of the It can be in any location because like the car, the car can travel to the right, another car travel to the left. So that is Lagrangian type. Now, in the case of Eulerian type, if you want to draw the volume, control volume covering all the particles of fluid, it is easy because you fix, you are above a bridge, so you fix the control volume. But in the case of Lagrangian type, where the car needs to be followed one by one, the control volume can be becoming very big because it needs to cover the particle every time. So if one particle goes to the right and one particle goes to the left, so the control volume will be very big. But both approaches are valid for now. For our case, we are going to focus on the Eulerian type. It means we are going to fix a control volume. And the application of this control volume can be, for example, you want to analyze a flow in pipe. You create a virtual control volume inside the pipe and then you analyze the flow. So this is an example of the control volume. Suppose that you want to analyze the flow in this enlargement section of the pipe. So from small diameter to bigger diameter. You don't want to analyze from very long to the left and very far to the right. You just want to analyze the flow around this enlargement. So you draw the control volume here, covering a little bit before the enlargement section and a little bit after the enlargement section. In this case, the boundary of the control volume coincides with the pipe wall. Another example of the control volume is suppose that you want to analyze the flow in the jet engine of an aircraft while moving. It means the aircraft is flying. So we want to analyze. We can say that this control volume that covering the engine is moving following the airplane. 
this sprinkler is also an example of moving control volume. It's rotating. The control volume is fixed. That's what we want to study. However, the control volume is moving, rotating in this case. Another example is this one. So this is a vein. A jet is hitting the vein, so the vein is moving to the right. So we draw the control volume, and this control volume is moving. This one, the control volume is deforming. Depending on the position of the piston, sometimes it's growing, sometimes shrinking. The shell of the control volume, we call it control surface. Having understood the control volume, we are going to apply this three conservation law. One is conservation of mass, this part, and then we have conservation of momentum. I put in the last part, I think, conservation of energy in the second part. Conservation of mass usually used everywhere. Conservation of momentum, if you want to measure the force. Conservation of energy, if you want to measure the velocity. Conservation of mass. Mass, like energy, is conserved property. It cannot be created or destroyed during a process. It can change the shape, but the mass still there. So by right, if you eat one kilogram of food now, your weight will increase by one kilogram. But in reality, it is not. Because part of the food that you eat is converted to energy. In our case, we are going to assume that nothing is converted to energy. So if you take one kilogram of food, your weight will be increased by one kilogram. So if you mix, for example, a two kilogram of hydrogen with 16 kilogram of oxygen, you are going to have 18 kilogram of water. The term closed system, it means the mass of the system remain constant during the process. Control volume, mass can cross the boundaries. Mass flow rate is the amount of mass flowing through a cross section per unit time. So in unit, it will be kilogram per second. In symbol, it will be m dot. So the dot means the rate. So later when you talk about volume flow rate, it will be v dot. To analyze m dot, Let's consider this dash line. This dash line is a control surface. I told you the control surface is the shell or the boundary of the control volume. So let's take a small part of this control surface. A small part, we call it DAC. And then we analyze the amount of particles passing through this control surface. If the flow passing through the control surface in this direction V, so we are going to consider only the normal projection velocity which is perpendicular to the control surface. Vn is the velocity in meter per second times area meter square. So meter per second times meter square is meter cube per second. Meter cube is volume. Volume per second means volume flow rate. To obtain mass flow rate, the volume must be multiplied with rho. Meter cube per second times kilogram per meter cube, it becomes kilogram per second. So the mass flow rate is rho times Vn times the element of area that is the element of mass flow rate the unit kilogram per second the amount of mass passing through the overall control surface you need to integrate this one left and right so you're going to have this one the integration will be covering the control surface so if you integrate the delta m dot here becoming m dot this is the mass flow rate now let's see the velocity. Suppose that you have a flow in pipe. The velocity inside the pipe is not uniform. The velocity of the fluid on the wall is zero. And then it is growing until it reaches maximum at the center. And then reduce again when reaching the other side of the wall. This is the velocity profile. So when we talk about the velocity in the pipe, which velocity we are talking about? Is this velocity or in the middle velocity? It's not the same. For that, we introduce the term average velocity. The average velocity, mathematically, it is calculated using this formula. This is mathematical formula to calculate average. So in this case, we have 1 over AC integral of Vn dAc. Again, Vn is the velocity perpendicular to the control surface. 
This is the formula for the average. So usually when we say that the velocity of water inside the pipe is certain value, that value represents the average velocity, not the real velocity that we have across the section. Vn times AC. Vn, the unit, is meter per second. Area is meter square. So you multiply meter per second with meter square. It becomes meter cube per second. That's what we call it volume flow rate. The symbol for volume flow rate is like this. It's also V dot, but different V than the velocity. So you need to be careful now. When you write V, does it mean velocity or volume? In the Schengel book, he used this V for volume. This V with dot, volume flow rate. The straight V is for velocity. Some proposed for the velocity is V. For the volume, like that. Or in the channel book, this is volume and this one, velocity. This integral of Vn times dAc for a cross-section AC, we call it volume flow rate. So if you see this one, you put AC on the left. So the integral of Vn dAc equal to VAVG times AC, just simply write VAC. When we write V, we are talking about the average velocity. So V dot is velocity times the cross-section area. The volume flow rate is the volume of fluid flowing through a cross-section per unit time. The mass flow rate is kilogram per second. So you need to multiply the meter cube per second with rho which is kilogram per meter cube. So meter cube disappear, it becomes kilogram per second. So mass flow rate is rho VA. Rho times velocity times cross section, the area. Mass density, velocity, area. Since V times A is V dot, so this V is volume flow rate. So rho times volume flow rate is mass flow rate. M dot equals to rho VA and V dot is AV or VA. So M dot is rho V dot. Unit, volume flow rate, meter cube per second, mass flow rate, kilogram per second.